Hello and welcome to Weather One. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. This is the first video in a series where we're gonna talk about how do we retrieve weather data and get it displayed in our workbooks exactly as we like. And if you're a weather buff, awesome, you're gonna love this series. And if you're not, I would still encourage you to watch them because we're gonna learn some underlying core Excel skills that are broadly applicable, especially the power query exercises. So by the end of this series, you'll be able to click a single button and the weather forecast for your city state is gonna pop right into your Excel as if from thin air. It's like magic. Let's head to the first exercise, exercise one. Okay, the first step in our weather journey here is to translate a city and state into latitude and longitude. And so our goal is to be able to let the user enter a city and state and have Excel give us the latitude and longitude. And that's what we'll feed into the weather service to pull the weather forecast. So for example, let's say we want to go with Reno, Nevada. We need to get the latitude and longitude for that. This is Excel. Of course, there's many ways to do like anything in Excel. So the first way we'll do it is by using a geography data type. So we pick the cell, we go to the data tab, under data types, we pick geography. Okay, did you see that? It just converted this city state that I typed in into a geography data type. Now geography data types are very cool. First of all, you can click the little icon and pull up the card and it brings in some rich data from the internet. As we scroll down, we see that we also have latitude and longitude. Now, rather than just showing in the card, we want these values to be stored in cells. So what we'll do is we'll just click this insert data command and we'll pick the thing we want. We want latitude and we also want longitude. And that's the easiest way to retrieve latitude and longitude for a city state. But if your Excel doesn't have the geography data type, I'll show you another method in the next exercise. But before we go there, let me show you how cool this is. It's easy to change this. For example, I can type Boise, Idaho, enter. And there the conversion just happened. Let's do another one. Cheyenne, Wyoming, enter, and got it. Now what happens if there's like multiple possible options? New York, New York, enter. What's gonna happen is it's gonna give us a question mark saying it needs a little help, so we select it, and then we get the data selector on the right. So it's just asking us to confirm. In other words, there's multiple possibilities. Which one are you talking about? So we can select the one we want, and now we've got it. But if you don't have the geography data type, let's look at another method in the next exercise. Exercise two. Did you know there's this free web API that allows you to give it a city and state and it'll return the latitude and longitude. So this is the basic structure of this URL. You specify the format, the city, and the state. And we can open this in our browser. So let me click this. And when we open it in our web browser, this is basically what it looks like. And you can see here, there's latitude and longitude. Let me close this. You can also specify the return format. Currently, we're gonna do XML because that's a little easier to parse in Excel, but you can also return it in a JSON format. Let's click that. And this is basically what it returns. Same basic data, just in a different format. So what we basically wanna do is allow the user to enter a city state, and we wanna create this combined URL that then we can go and retrieve. To create the combined URL, we'll use the concat function. There are other options. So if you haven't used concat before, it basically joins. So basically we wanna join the base URL, comma, and then we wanna join the word city equals, comma, and then we wanna join the city, comma, and then we wanna join and state equals, comma, and then we wanna join the state. Close function and enter. And this should give us our sample URL. Let's just double check. Where format equals XML and city equals Reno and state equals NV. Okay, that's looking good. Now to get that retrieved right into the Excel grid instead of our web browser, we're gonna use the web service function. Equals web service. And we're just gonna pass it the URL in C13. Close function and enter. And just like that, we have the same value that was being displayed in the web browser right inside the grid. Now the next step is to just pull the latitude and longitude out of this returned XML string. And we'll do that in the next exercise, exercise three. We have the base URL, we have the combined URL which pulls in the city and state, and then we have the web service function that retrieves the XML string. Now we wanna pick out the latitude and longitude. So before we do that, let's talk about the structure of this data that's being returned. This is a sample, just to kind of understand the tags. We have this search results tag, and it provides all this information. 
and then we have a place tag. And within the place tag, we see lots of attributes. We want to get the latitude and longitude attribute values. So the way that we can do that is with the filter XML function. We basically provide it the XML value. That's the value that's returned here in C17 comma, and then what's known as the X path. And that's just telling it which attributes we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to enclose this in quotes and we're going to do a forward slash and we're going to say search results and then another forward slash and then we want place and then another forward slash and then we want the attribute. So we use this at and then we want lat close quote, close function and enter. And now, as you can see, it pulled this value right out of this text string. Pretty cool. And let's do the same thing for longitude. Filter XML, the XML string is here in C17, comma, the X path is search results, place, at, lon, close quote, close function, and enter. And now we got it. Perfect. And now the user can change the city and state. For example, Boise, Idaho. And now we've got it. Now you'll notice if a combination isn't found, it gives us this value error. If we wanted to, we could just wrap an if error function around this filter XML function. Do your best to get a result from the filter XML function. But if it returns an error, then what do we want to put instead? And we can just put a message to the user like place not found. Close function and enter. And we can do the same thing with the longitude. If error, comma, place not found. Close function and enter. And that'll be the error message until we find a place that is returned. So this sets us up perfectly for the next video. The next step is to take the latitude and longitude and feed it into a weather API to retrieve the weather forecast. I didn't want to skip to that until we covered this because this is going to be important to using the weather API. Even if you don't want to use this for the weather, you learned about the geography data type, how we can use the web service function to retrieve web results, and how we can use the filter XML function so you can pick out values from the returned XML string. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University. 